Hi everyone, so welcome back. Today we're gonna to be looking at AOC and her dumbass, like not even try to listen to her constituents. We're gonna watch the whole entire thing to get more um, of a better opinion and not just biased ones from certain clips. But this is a full video um, um, when AOC busts the move at the protesters crash town hall. Uh, posted up by the New York Post. We're going to talk about it and then we're going to talk about we're going to switch over to a Fox um, episode in which they go over why AOC is so furious that um, she's losing Hispanic voter support. So without further ado, let's get into it. No, she's, she's saying not. it's housing she's for LBTQ. No, I'm just making the point. I know, but no. I'm just it's carrying the right. point. Because my question is significant. Well, that's worth it. It's <laughs> That's just unfair. That's like racist. That's like racist against straight people. I know, but we're trying to figure out what She's going to say, she's going to explain why. Wild crime that's going on. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. There you go. A woman that was stabbed 20 times that was a 9 11 FDNY. Yes. 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 This is insanity. Yes. 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 That's what we want the to know. Boy that was stabbed, the black boy, the black boy that was stabbed on the train platform yes. in Rockaway. Yeah. The black boy that was stabbed in Staten Island every single day. People don't want to believe the from the worker that was stabbed, killed. There's just nine killings on the train. This is all wonderful what you're talking about. Okay, right, you're affordable right. housing. That's all wonderful. Please, what else? Please, please, please. I'm going to give it to you. Bring me a bill. Hey, 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 hey. So leaving New York City, if you go when crime is under control, and I know you are all the four defunding the police. Yes. Yes. Yes, you you are. Are. Yes, you you yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. trying to say let her speak let her speak first off you're only doing that to drown out this individual's um, concerns which he has a right to that city is extremely dangerous and it's all because of policies that AOC has pushed like defund the police oh almost every progressive definitely call for that Cori Bush Ilya Omar Talia Rashid that bitch AOC like you like the people who are going to be affected by this the most are minorities and especially those in lower income um, areas, okay? But let's not pretend that, that minorities were telling you this before you wanted to enact these dumbass laws. You thought that you were doing something, but no, what you were really doing, what you were really doing was um, helping raise the casualty of brown and black bodies and now you're getting called out about about it by who no other than minorities the irony of that i love it i freaking love it I'm dancing because I agree with them. I'm not dancing because I actually uh, oppose them. Like, 
and, and want to mock them like AOC is. I 100% agree. Be like, yes, we will not comply. Be put it in a two step. Yeah, put it in a two step. Yeah, put it in a two step. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. She ain't nothing but trash. <laughs> A trash politician. We don't need you to get down. We don't need you to get down. We don't need you to get down. Very classy. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. She's smiling right now. She, you know, her problem is come. I swear, if New York actually keeps her in her office, in her seat, uh, well, that's y'all fault. That you, I, I hope you get everything you wish for. Um, you know, don't do the same mistakes that California did after they recalled Gavin Newsom's ass and then put him right back in. Okay, don't do the same thing because then I'm just gonna laugh at you all. I'm gonna laugh at you all because you could have took her out. She, that girl could have been in the unemployment line, but. She's probably going to put you in the unemployment line if you keep letting her stay around, making all these bad decisions. But I am going to have hope. I'm going to have hope that the majority of, like, the majority of the individuals in this room are definitely like, look at that, vote for Tina Forte, fuck AOC. Like, uh, I hope the majority of New Yorkers um, in New York City are like that, um, like they are in this room. It doesn't seem like she has a lot of supporters in this room. Unless, you know, my mind is playing games on me. But let's go back to this. Of course, the fat lesbian comes. I mean, she might not be a lesbian, but of course, the fat lady comes out and sing because AOC doesn't have the balls to stand up to the people that she literally fucked over. Step outside. You part of the reason. You are part of the reason why New York is the way it is. Cause you dumb. Y'all vote for these dumbass politicians who have all these grandiose ideas of what they think society will be like in their socialist fucking utopia. Well, guess what? It didn't work. It's not going to work. She probably. I mean, this girl don't even like to, to even know. What, she doesn't even know what a woman is. Okay, she's too scared to even say what a woman is. But you know what? It's because she's crazy. She's crazy, and she has all these policies that don't make any sense. And it's all because of people like you. Y'all voted for her in. So shut up, sit down, take the beating that you're going to take. And we don't want to hear it anymore. Just, just stop it. Please stop it. Please stop it.
balls like Carrie Lee, okay? If you see your constituents being like this, all right, don't you think you want to calm them down by saying something? You're just up there, like, just your presence there. It's literally, it's just antagonizing them even more because you're not saying anything. You're you're just sitting up there looking at them and, and quite frankly, like you're ignoring them and then mocking them when they make beats. Instead of getting up, standing up and saying, look, I know I fucked up. This is what I'm going to do if you keep elect, if you elect me to stay in. This is what I'm going to change. This is what I'm going to fix. But instead, you just sit there up on the stage and look at the calamity that you have caused and you just stare at them like you're just like you have nothing nothing to say to try to redeem yourself like these are the type of politicians we put into office it says a lot about the individuals who vote for them like why did you vote for them why did you vote for this type of individual when she don't even have the uh the audacity or the the strength the um the the um, conviction to stand up and admit that she's wrong and say this is what i'm going to fix because you know why she's not she this is everything that she wanted and she thought that the, the mass, you idiots who voted for her, would go right along with it. She knew that it would cause this travesty. She knew that it would cause um, more crime. She knew that inflation would grow, um, rise. She doesn't even, like, and for someone who has a basic understanding of economics, come on. Or at least that's what she claimed she went to school for. But to sit here and act like she didn't think any of these things would come to pass, I think it's a... Uh, a little disingenuous and a little naive to think that none of those things would actually have an effect on society in the manner that it has. Like anyone could have told you when you defund the police, you will definitely have issues arise. People will abuse the law. They will take for granted that the police um, are not going to be called out. Um, they're going to be opportunistic um, when because the police are not at their full capacity and when, you know, left to, if humans are left to their own demise, they will take the path of the least resistance, okay? Time after, you don't need a history book to know this. You don't need, I mean, well, you see it through history, but it, it literally explains so in psychology, sociology, anthropology, they all have the same um, tales when it comes to individuals. If given certain opportunities, in which they can make their lives easier, and if that means it have a little criminal criminality element to it, they will go down that path. And uh, well, you guys were voted for it. It's not like she had this all a secret. It's not like she didn't. Um, when it, and then this woman over here screaming how there's two genders. Uh, well, you voted for her. She's literally been all about LGBTQ stuff and advocating for them more than than women for crying out loud and she's an actual woman. Now she doesn't even, she doesn't even want to acknowledge that women are mothers. She calls them pr people who have the pr capacity to get pregnant. Okay, really? Okay, you, you, she definitely sucked the tit of propaganda like really hard, but you know, whatever. <laughs> She's so scared of the pop. She, she's so scared of the pop, the populace, because they were rising up against her. So now the lights go off. She's gonna hide inside this little cubby because she's scared that someone might come and attack her. Thank you. So she's worried about her safety, but she could give a damn about the consti uh, her constituent safety. Like the audacity on this woman, the audacity on this woman. Oh, I hope she does not get real. All right, listen, listen, okay, listen. You all right? Okay, 
go and make your point. If you want to keep going, we can go all night, whatever it is. What are you going to do to fix it? Did I it? <laughs> oh man, okay. Okay, so now we're gonna watch. Um, You've been think we're gonna watch this um, episode with Gutfield. I actually really like Gutfield's show. I haven't been watching it a little uh, lately, but um, let's see their take on AOC blaming the Democrat Party for losing Latino voters. Okay, she really did not. Um, you know, I, I, this is just gonna be my opinion. When you try to say that families are important, when you try to dissolve family units by making sure they break up so that, oh, um, if you have a two household family and you make too much money, well, then you won't be, um, you won't be eligible for certain tax breaks, right? It's like you, it's like you're, um, it's like you're enabling families to break up when you uh, try to indoctrinate children about genders. And uh, have, if I'm from Florida, and um, I will definitely say that there, with between living with Arizona and Florida, I do think they're a different breed when it comes to a Latino or Hispanic voters. I do think Mexican Americans are, are very different than individuals who come from Cuba, who come from the Dominican uh, Dominic Republic, and all the other stuff. They live under heavy socialism type, you know, communism rule. They don't want any of that. They don't want any essence of that because they know what it looks like down there. When I feel like a lot of Mexicans who do come up, um, and from even from what. Um, um, individuals along the Arizona border are saying uh, when these uh, illegals cross over into their their property, a lot of these farmers, they cross over to their property. Years ago, um, they were happy when individuals would give them water, would give them food, and uh, a lot of farmers were more um, genuine and wanting to help these individuals. However, now they're coming over with entitlement saying, oh, we don't want that type of water. We want bo um, bottled water. Oh, we don't want that type of food. This is the type of food we want. And I'm sorry, bitch, you come from a country that didn't even care about you as a, as a citizen. They did nothing. If you actually look into the history of Mexico and Latin America, they did nothing to actually help you guys. Every single time a politician has gotten into power, it was always um, for them, the oligarchs. Just go... <laughs> If anyone um have read uh, the fall on um, how nations fall, I would definitely recommend that. Okay, it literally tells why um in Arizona where you have Nogales, Arizona and Nogales, Mexico, it tells you why there's a difference. Even though there's only thing that's in between them is a freaking border. Mexico never had a constitution like we did, in which they put in which the constitution was made by the people for the people. Okay, that's the difference. And now these individuals come over here acting like they're entitled. They're, you know, uh, thinking that the government should be there to help them. I don't really like those types of Hispanics. I don't like the. I don't, I don't even like those type of those type of Americans. No, because that requires you taking, um, stealing from people who go out and labor really hard to provide a lifestyle for you. And I don't think that's fair. Okay, America wasn't founded that way. And if it was up to me, I would get rid of every single social service that we have and let us go right back to freaking what it was before the 1960s when social okay when it comes to the older people um social security but when it comes to latinas they like to take they have big families or at least that's what i knew back in florida they have big families they're very pro god they're very pro family and when you uh, when you don't even want to know when you don't even want to claim what is a woman and what is a man um um you don't want to talk about God. You want to get rid of God. You don't. Ha you don't have to blame the Democrat Party on that AOC. You just blame it on yourself. Like, really? Are you shocked that they don't want to support your ass? Are you shocked that um um let's call it um the um the Flores um Alexandra Flores not Alexandra Flores but uh the the woman who down in Texas um took over a region that was had been Democrat strong for decades. She took that over as a Republican. Are you shocked? Are you, why are you shocked? 
everything that this new this new Latina part of the Democrat Party um, has become so anti-family. You didn't you no one had to influence these Latinas to change their mind. All they needed is someone to represent what their culture is about and they will vote for them, not your ass. But, you know, call me crazy. I don't think the Democrat Party um about trying out needed the to help you dog for get your rid of I've been a customer for about a year now, so I wanted to make Republicans. I don't think the party, um, the Democrat Party, helped you in getting rid of uh, losing this um, Latina Hispanic vote. You did that all yourself. They're making serious inroads with the fastest growing voting group, and Democrats are already playing the blame game. Turns out Democrats have been taking Latino voters for granted when it comes to their top issues inflation, crime, and immigration. And AOC is lashing out at her own party for never making an effort. <laughs> I can at least say with Latino voters, we've never tried as a party. The Democratic Party has not tried in, in terms of Latino electorates. And I mean, where's our DREAM Act? Where is our- DREAM Act is letting illegals who broke our laws get citizenship. No legal migrant I know wants that ever. Okay, especially when they have to go through so much shit to get here to begin with in the first place. And I stand by those who come here the right way, who go through school, go whatever they have to do to come here, whether that be through refugee or um, um, uh, asylum status. No, those individuals deserve to be here. These fucking entitled pieces of shit going, coming through our border. No. And then they're bringing fentanyl with them too. No, they do not deserve and, it, and then the entitlement of these individuals that broke our law and think they're going to get citizenship. Name one country, name one country where there's um, open borders and that you can just go in and then de demand citizenship. In Japan, Japan, you will never, ever, ever be a citizen, okay? I don't hear anybody else complaining about that, claiming that they're xenophobic. No, they have a culture, they have a ritual, and they do not want to taint it by individuals who would blatantly disrespect who they are as a nation. And honestly, this whole um, this whole persona that we have here in America where we don't even have pride in our culture, name one country that hasn't had a bad history, but yet the people there aren't proud, are still proud of their country. Name one. But for some reason, the Democrat Party wants you to feel so fucking, you just hate your country, just hate your country so much. Allow people who don't even, allow people here who don't even respect you to come in and take what they claim to be theirs, all for entitlement, all by entitlement. I'm like, you know, you, you didn't need, like, like I said, by enacting certain policies and neglecting your own constituents, neglecting the citizens that put you into power to begin with in the first place, the Democrats, all of them, all of them are going to just see what happens when it comes to the midterms this year. You have put Americans on the back burner. You have put Ukrainians before Americans. You have even left Americans over in the Middle East. You have put um, individuals from all over around, around the world that are coming through our border illegally above Americans. You have put them above our homeless. You have put us put them above our veterans with our own tax dollars. I don't think the no one did this but you guys. Your the whole entire party did this to yourselves by thinking that you can use our tax dollars as a piggy bank for your socialist experiment. It failed and now you will pay the price for it come, you know, November 8th. Reform. We really need to step up both in our efforts on the campaign, but also our efforts in governance. But MSNBC's Joy Reid is in complete denial and thanks the mainstream media, thinks the mainstream media is just hyping the story. There is this thing that's happening in the mainstream media that they say, oh, um, Hispanic voters are going Republican, as if they are now a solid Republican group because you do have some South Texas counties that are shifting red. Well, I've been pulling my hair out for the last couple of months as I've seen story after story after story that you mentioned acting as though the Latino vote is somehow firmly a Republican vote now, which couldn't be further from the truth because when you poll it, <laughs> Latinos are still firmly Democratic. Okay. Okay. Hey, I'll keep, start with you, keep, Jesse. Keep I mean, telling yourself that. that. We've even reported that there's an increase of Latino voters. Uh, going they might not be going Republican, but I, I guarantee you they're um, shifting over to the independents.
going toward the Republicans, and they act like we're making this stuff up. Yeah, they do. Well, they should be worried. The Democrats made a mistake because they tried to lump blacks in with Hispanics yep. and yeah. tried to pitch them the same way. Yeah. But the black experience in America is different than the Hispanic experience. Their family mm -hmm. trees are different. The yep. Hispanic family tree is complicated. You have light-skinned Hispanics that trace their lineage back to Spain. European yep. Spain. You have darker-skinned Hispanics that have more of an indigenous background. Puerto Rico is different than Cuba. Mm -hmm. Central America is different than South America. And then you have second and third generation Hispanics here that are very assimilated. And then you have migrants that just got here. And so the Democrats try to pitch Hispanics by using the big government race card play yeah, that they use that on blacks. Work. And it's not working because economics, especially inflation and crime, trumps identity politics. Yep. And it's turned Hispanics into swing voters. Mm -hmm. Now Hispanics are up for grabs. And that would be a death blow to the mm -hmm. Democrat Party coalition. He nailed it on the head. And for some reason, like like black people, Democrats have always taken our votes for granted. And that's because, honestly, they bought us. Um, in particular, they bought the black woman with that new deal by that racist um, Lyndon B. Johnson. And, you know... For, for the, those in my community who still have it, who, who keeps drinking the fucking Kool-Aid, I'm going to literally ask you, okay? And then I, I, I really want you to reflect upon this, okay? The Confederates, you know, the people who were in charge of slavery back then, you know, the party that pretty much, um, uh, uh, I guess, um, erected from that was the Democrat Party, Okay. Um, the first free, the slaves, when they were free, guess who, what party they belonged to? Not the people who tried to enslave them and keep them in bondage for literally ever. Um, they were Republican. Frederick Douglass was a Republican. Okay. Now I will ask you, all right. So, um, the three fifth compromise that was done in the Confederates that had to do with slaves. If you were sent up, if a slave escaped and was captured up North, guess what? They were bring your ass back down to the South. Okay. That's one thing that Democrats, um, ex Confederates slash Democrats, you know, loved, um, the hat pass after slavery was ended. You had Jim Crow law. Well, wait, wait, wait. There was the vote thing by literacy. If you were um, by literacy, that was enacted by who no other than the Democrat party. Another thing, the KKK. Yeah, that came from the Democrat party, the Jim Crow laws. Yeah, that came from the Democrat party. The, the first civil rights act of 1957, which was filibustered by Strom Thurgood, um, who was a Democrat who's, who actually held the longest, the longest filibuster ever. OK, was a Democrat. OK, it was those Republicans that put up the first civil rights of 1957 to in order to have blacks have more rights in society. That was knocked down by no other than who? Democrats. The first um, black Supreme Court justice that was nominated was actually by Republican. You know who shot that down to um, not have them nominated? No other than fucking Joe Biden. So it's like, oh, oh, and the people um, who were in charge of the South during the Rosa Parks, guess who they were? They were Democrats. Like how many times do we, how, I don't even know how they somehow changed the narrative to say that it was the KKK and all this other stuff that was started by Republicans. No, it's literally in our history but stop listening to what you know the likes of hillary and bill and aoc and freaking uh, um what's her name uh stacy abrams tell you pick up a book and read it okay go to your half um your your half book uh half price bookstores they have really 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 old books that you know that stuff that can't be erased if that's still there you can get if you try to look any um look up books from more that are more modern day when it comes to history and i actually find it fucking disgusting and in importance one of them i don't i don't subscribe to that anymore is national geographic how the hell did they all of a sudden become political they've always been about geography and then lately they're they're just all po fucking political it's really irking my freaking nerves man but modern history books are trying to and have at, um, been successful in rewriting history for, in order to paint the democrats in a, a very great light but you can not look at the if you you, you you sit here and complain about the white men and our 
our um, our struggles to have to be independent as blacks, but you fail to even recognize the damage that the Democrats party. Oh, not to mention, I forgot about the whole crime bill, the 94 crime bill. How many of these events must we have on display for you guys to wake up and smell the coffee and to even see that LBJ, the only reason why you vote Democrat is because you don't want to lose the plantation that it's what we call the welfare system. And the man who put it in place, LBJ said that she would keep voting Democrat for 200 years. He literally called us niggers. Yeah, he called us that. But sit here and keep, keep calling me a goon because I don't like those types of white people. I do not like those type of white people who try to tell us that they, we can't be shit without their fucking help. Sorry that I'm getting a little bit heated, but you know, I, I wish, I just want black people to literally go, just go back, just go back to 18, um, Go back to around 1880 something and, and, and map out everything that came from the Confederate into the Democrat Party and tell me, please tell me that I'm crazy to sit here and think that these people are on our side when I just literally gave you a list of everything they have done since they since they erected their party that has wrecked our freaking lives and made our our just our lives harder in America it wasn't the Republicans and one thing I will say about the Republicans they never claim to be um there for the people um they never do they all the only thing they were more concerned about was the economy they felt like hey if the economy is gonna doing good everybody's doing good and honestly I rather have it like that because at least they won't they won't be looking at color okay. It's, it's, a, it's a dog eat dog world. If you can't fucking make it, oh well, okay, then maybe you don't belong here. I'm sorry, I'm not trying to say you need to commit suicide or anything like that, but it's a dog eats dog world. And the, 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 the saddest thing I can, you can ever do to a human being is tell them that you will never be anything, that you can't be anything without our help. That is some egotistical, some like, I don't know what kind of shit that is, but the damage, psychological damage that does to someone, they will never have the confidence to do anything on your own. But okay, tell them, you want to accept it as compassion? I don't fucking see it as compassion. I see it as these people who think they are are our superiors and thinking that we can't do shit without their, without their help. But I digress. Let me go back to AOC blaming the Democrat Party for losing Latino voters. She's doing the same thing um, that um, that Democrats have been doing to the black community forever. Assuming that they got the vote simply why? Because you're like you're Latino or you're helping them out. OK. How do they explain Myra Flores, who uh, there you you know, is now running for Congress, having won the primary? <laughs> and by the way, she... Uh, well, she won that special seat. She's she won the special right, seat, right. right. But she, the, the Congressional Hispanic Caucus rejected her mm -hmm. as a member. Is it, are you considered Latina if you are a Democrat, but not if you're a Republican? You know, I mean, they do that to the, the Black Caucus, do that to Black people. They reject you if you're a Republican or an Independent, but they'll gladly accept you if you're a Democrat. I don't know the answer to the question. I'll say they're light-skinned Blacks on one of them, and they're dark-skinned Blacks uh, as well. But I, I, understand, black? <laughs> I understand the point. Oh God, I understand I the think. point that, that, that... I don't that, see that, color. I understand the point that you're making, and, and I happen to, happen to agree. I think Democrats and Republicans have to realize with every community, you have to have a continuous conversation and engagement with blacks, with whites, with Latinas, with Hispanics, all voters. And when you b begin to take them for granted and think 45 days out from an election, you can put a massive get out the vote effort and hopefully that group goes out to vote for you. If that's the only engagement, then you're gonna run into these challenges that I don't often agree with the Congresswoman. I, I think I, I understand what she's saying. You cannot say they've never campaigned. I think there's a laziness uh, amongst some Democrats and some Democratic strategists about how you go about engaging communities of color, particularly black and Hispanic voters. Um, black and Hispanic voters are, are interested in crime. Mm -hmm. We're interested in inflation. We're interested in national security. We want uh, clean energy, but we also want energy that is plentiful. Mm -hmm. You have to have the same conversation with those voters you have with every other voter. And when you start trying to subset and figure out how you maybe uh, angle here to talk to this group of voters, you're going to run the risk of doing, I think, what the congresswoman was trying to say, which is alienating people and maybe even pushing them to the other party. Yeah, well, don't call them tacos. Jill Biden learned that. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Breakfast but, tacos. You know, Dana, the, the <laughs> truth is that Keto works and Keto works fast. So that's why we rely on Factor. They send us keto-friendly meals every With the number of 
blacks and Hispanics who are moving toward the Republican Party. I think whatever that number is, there is a movement. Mm -hmm. And low voter turnout, I think that that might be part of the argument that AOC is making. That Do you think that there is a motivation on the part of the Democrats to have a high voter turnout? Well, I, I think that, one, I've never heard her praise anyone. She just complains about everybody. And I would point her to Dan Balls of the Washington Post, a veteran reporter. He just did a very deep dive on Hispanic voters in Nevada. Yeah. And that is a Senate Balls seat deep. that they are likely to lose. And most in of it Nevada. will be in Nevada because <laughs> of Latino voters moving towards them. And I don't know why you guys are laughing, but you can tell me in the commercial break. Um, <laughs> the other thing is, let's be honest here, that they are departing mostly based on economic issues. Yep. Mm -hmm. So if you push the Green New Deal, and you want to take away their jobs, you want to change agriculture, you want to change the way they even refer to themselves and make them call themselves yeah. Latinx. Latinx. Um, they, they, they have abandoned the party on, the, they have abandoned Latinos on, on that. I will point out that if the Stanford Business School shows that Latino communities are the ones that are the most entrepreneurial. Who was hurt the most during the COVID lockdowns? Right. Those entrepreneurs. And so they're not going to forget that. And you can't just show up and say, well, you can't vote because Republican because you never have. That's just not going to work for, with people. And I also think that the school issue is a really big one. Mm -hmm. When Glenn Youngkin won yep. a lot of Hispanic votes in Virginia, part of the reason was because he said, I will make sure that advanced math is taught in school, that kids are going to be reading at grade level because the parents want their kids to do very well. All while the Democrats push, oh, math is racist. Let's get that out. Oh, my God. No, up in New York. I think it was Bill de Blasio trying to get rid of... Um, uh, I guess you could call them, um, oh my God, the harder classes, like the uh, honor classes. Oh no, we need to get rid of that. Everybody needs, let's dub everybody down on the same level. Let's not give those who have an aptitude to harness it in a harder, in a harder class or in a harder environment, right? No, that that's too, that's too, that's too racist. Okay. We can't do that. Like seriously. All right. Y'all like that's, I don't know. I'm like, look, you have, you guys have no one to blame. No one to blame when you're trying to dumb down people, kids, when you took away their jobs, want them to get on welfare, mm, especially if they come from countries like Cuba. Oh, yeah, that would be that's a really, really terrible thing um, to implement and then expect them to vote for you come next term. Mm. Yeah, it's not going to happen. They've seen this already in their country and they know how that turns out. So the bullshit story that you're feeding them with this whole new green deal. Yeah. Yeah. It's not going to work. Mm. All right, there. Greg. You know, part of part of what AOC is complaining about is when when she when the president issued that uh, pardon for those people who were in prison for marijuana possession, she wanted it to extend to undocumented mm. individuals, and she's very upset with the Joe Biden for that. No. Nope. In well, the end, how does it play out? I don't know, Judge, but I, as you know, I identify as Latin X. Uh, <laughs> Certain, why? Why? Well, on certain adult websites, I do anyway. <laughs> I don't. I'm. We're, I'm wondering what she has done for Latinos. She's killed thousands of jobs. That's right. yep. That would have directly yep. benefited Latinos in her district. She said nothing about crime. I haven't heard anything, especially crime affecting women. She. Nope. She. She actually said. It, it, to your point. Well, she doesn't know what a woman is, so how could she possibly send, stand there and try to defend violence against, against women? Like, she literally backed herself into this corner. Let's just be honest. In that, all she does is say, you, 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 and you go, well, what about you? And she has nothing. I think what she's saying, and I'm reading her mind here, which is hard to do, but... Uh, <laughs> Maybe she, what she's saying is she wants Latinos to be turned into a, a homogenized voting block. Yeah. That Dems can count on no matter what. Yeah. yeah. I think that's all it is. That's what it and, is. And she's trying to figure out why Latinos are resistant to being <laughs> part of the victim class. Like why? Like they, yeah. the left has spent decades, decades trying to get blacks to be seen as, 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 as an oppressed group so they don't ever leave. And I think that she's watching the exodus. She's watching people leave. And she's saying, you know what? We don't have a strong grip on Latinos. How do we get them to think that we're their savior? They won't because their savior is religion, yep. family, working. Yep. It's not the kind of, it's not progressive politics. And I think she might be perceptive enough to realize the progressive woke ideology is, doesn't work. And it's not working on blacks either. If you talk to oh, blacks, yeah. they don't, they're like, 
You're like, yeah. this really? stuff, this is just for white liberals. <laughs> yeah. This is for That's guilty so white liberals. Exactly. I, 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 am I, okay, let me just finish. Let him finish. <laughs> hey, Sean Hannity oh, here. Hey, click here. So, yeah, I 100% agree. All these policies the, that they want to pass uh, out, of, out of compassion, they're not compassion. This is all white guilt from liberals. And I, there is a very distinct group of those individuals too. Not everybody on the left agrees. Um, not everybody on the left who is white are like that, but there's a very subset of these individuals that have the loudest voice. They're in all, all they're in the height. There are in positions of power that think that their compassion is helping us. But we already know that it's not. But for some reason, all they got to do is pander to a few blacks and they'll just eat that shit up. Because why? They're just that dumb. They're that brainwashed. Their kids are brainwashed and their kids are probably going to do the same thing. Vote for the white person who says they're going to give you this, give you that, give you this and give you that. Uh, just like they're on a plantation. Like, ugh. Like, honestly, those types of blacks, they they just disgust me. I'm not going to even lie. I like, mm, you couldn't be in my posse. Bye. But anyways, thanks for tuning in.